Hi everyone, so today we're going to be reading chapter 9. Reading chapter 9 in the book, and it starts like this. This year my relatives from Mexico City came to visit for Thanksgiving. Even though we don't even celebrate Thanksgiving in Mexico, my family still likes to visit them. Actually, I kind of think they're obsessed with it. Mom uses all of the recipes from Betty Crocker, the most American cookbook for our Thanksgiving meal, and my relatives get excited about it. American food is so exotic to them. Still, our dinner is not just American food. Mom makes a couple of special a special Latin dishes like picadillo and elote. She also likes to have some of my relatives' favorite foods as snacks when they're here, like guava, pan tostado, and papaya. To buy spe the special foods, we have to go to another town. It's very different from where we live. Almost all of the signs are in Spanish. It's a little far, so the only time we go are when we need to go to a store called La Sorpresa. Let's go pick up some supplies. Thanks for our tía and abuelo, Mom says, as she drives to her favorite store. La Sorpresa means surprise in Spanish. It's sort of the perfect name for the store. Even though it's small, it's filled with so many shelves that every turn is like a surprise. The biggest surprise happens when we go to the produce area. I see so many interesting vegetables and fruits. There are prickly pears, coconuts, yuca, and huge bananas called plantains that are not even bananas. I even see cactus. People eat this? I asked my mom, poking at one of the cactus leaves. See, it's nopales. You like it. I go, this is nopales? You mean I've been eating cactus? I don't understand why I haven't noticed the spiny needles going down my throat. So if you see, this is a store called La Sorpresa. Look how nice that is. So she looks like she's having a really good time. There's her mom probably looking like at a grocery list or something. All right, and there's her. She's moving to the car. And then there's her brother. And look, there's a piñata. Here are some of the fruit she mentions, right? So it looks like they're having a really good time. She says that she, she didn't know she was eating nopales. She laughs, knowing that I'm thinking, you take off the needles before you cook it. That's why. Whew. Nick grabs a piece of wrapped golden cake that looks like a pancake, except it has sesame seeds. Wait, this is a quesadilla, mom? Oh, that's delicious. Grab some. They eat that in El Salvador. Your grandmother makes it sometimes. Mom's mom, my abuela, loves to cook because abuela grew up in El Salvador. She makes all of these different dishes from Central America, Cuba, and Spain. She even makes Italian because some members of her family were from Italy. Boy, I'm happy about that too. Mom knows how to make lots of those delicious dishes because of abuela. I thought quesadillas were like tortillas and cheese, says Nick. They are, but that's the Mexican quesadilla. This is a Salvadoran quesadilla. I get quiet as soon as I start thinking about all the countries that speak Spanish. There are so many, and all of them are different in their own ways. They have different foods and even different ways of speaking Spanish. I barely know anything about them, especially Mexico, where I'm from. Then I realize that as much as I think I might fit in better in Mexico than in the United States, I really wouldn't. I know only a handful of things about Mexico from my family, Definitely not enough to make me feel like to fit in. The truth is, we don't go back to Mexico City too often because it's very expensive to get there. I do know that Mexico City used to be the world's largest city. When I close my eyes and picture it in my head, it makes me it makes Chicago even feel small. Mom used to say that when Nick got, first got to Chicago, he would say everything that was flat and empty. He later changed his mind after we drove through Iowa. Mom tell, Mom, tell me about Mexico City again, I asked, wanting to picture where we came from. Mexico City is in a valley surrounded by two volcanoes. One, volca one volcano is Popocatapel, the other is Itzacihuatl. Itza According to access, Itzacihuatl is a princess and Popocatapel is the warrior who protects her. She told me about the volcanoes a bunch of times, but I still love I still love hearing about them. It makes me feel like I come from a place that's special. And mom and that I'm connected to the place through her. Mom continues telling us about her home as we stroll through the aisles of the grocery store. I see other families and smile at them. They smile back. I wish I felt more comfortable speaking with them. Still, hearing so much Spanish feels nice to my ears. 
It's like a warm blanket. Plus, there are so many fun words that sound better in Spanish than English. Like café instead of coffee. Or buenísimo instead of really good. Although, I would never use both those words in the same sentence. Café is not buenísimo. It's gross. Nick pushes the cart while Mom grabs glass shards of, of pimentos and aceitunas off the shelves. If they weren't too hard to open, I'd eat the aceitunas right away. I love olives almost as much as I love albondigas. Next, Mom searches for the guava and the cheese. Then she checks things off the list and scans, pausing after a second. Your abuelo likes matrimonios when we play cards. Mom's face lights up as she says abuelo. Mom is very close to her dad. When my parents divorced, he stayed with us for a month. He even walked me to school every day. He is also the only person I try to speak Spanish with other than mom. That's because he lets me talk really, really slowly and takes the time to listen to me. He's so nice that I don't even mind when he laughs at me for saying the words wrong or not rolling my R's. Mom reviews her list one last time. We're almost, we almost forgot the frijoles, she says, pushing the cart back toward the aisle with the canned beans. As mom searches for the frijoles, I see a girl my age talking to her abuelo in Spanish. For a moment, I feel a little jealous. My jealousy is quickly replaced with a sinking feeling in my stomach. I realize that my relatives are going to be here tomorrow. I cross my fingers and hope that I'll wake up knowing more Spanish. So it's funny how she's changing, right? So here you see her, her can of frijoles. It's funny how she's changing because in the beginning of the story, you know, she was so worried about, like, not knowing enough English, not being able to say stuff at, at school, and that she's being made fun of. But what did, how did she change now in this episode? What does she feel like in this one? She says that she wishes that tomorrow when her relatives are coming over that she can know more Spanish. So why do you think that is? Why do you think that now she feels like, oh man, I wish I could know more Spanish when just a couple, when just in the last, in the last chapter, she was hoping that she could learn more English so she wouldn't be made fun of. Why do you think that is?